always your girl Adeola. So did you guys watch the Nigerian vice presidential debate? You're not creating jobs, you're not doing the right thing, and you're just fighting corruption. You can't shut down your shop and be chasing criminals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What? Tell them. Former governor Peter Obi, tell them. Only for the vice president or somebody to reply at the month. If you allow criminals to steal all the inventory in the shop, there will be no shop. <laughs> That's the problem. Fast thought you were not playing. Uh -uh. That was how they were going back and forth. Anyway, first of all, the debate committee chose five parties to participate in the debate, and people have been wondering the criteria that they used to choose those parties because there were some very popular parties whose candidates were not included. I was hoping that more of the younger people's parties would be included. Like, I'm so happy to see that Fela Drutoye's party was included, but I was surprised that Shawere's party was not included. And though I know that not all candidates will be invited for the debate, but his party is also popular. As a matter of fact, some of his followers were protesting outside the debate arena that night. Also, the whole debate focused on the economy and also subsidy. For more than two hours, what happened to security, which is a major issue right now in Nigeria? People are wondering why they did not talk about security and other issues. Now to the candidates that participated in the debate, starting with Bami Osimbajo, the vice president. You know, Dua, Mayoga, you're welcome to this show. Why is it that you kept blaming the previous administration and the 16 years of PDP? Why we're where we are today is because of 16 years of mismanagement of resources. You have spent four years in government, no be so. The child that was born the day that you guys got into power can now walk, can now talk, can now run. Even some of those children already have younger ones born after them. When will you stop blaming the previous government and take some responsibility for all that has happened in your own time as well? And speaking of subsidy, okay, do you guys remember the time that Buari used to say that subsidy is a scam? Who is subsidizing you? If anybody said he is subsidizing anything, he is a fraud. You see what I'm saying. Thank you very much, my brother. Now his government is paying 1.4 trillion naira for subsidy. Fads up, but what happened? Eh? And Abami Osimadio was defending this. Hapa. A subsidy is not inherently a bad thing. It's really the abuse. And I'll explain very quickly. What has changed between when you were campaigning and now that you are in power? Shabi, you said you would get rid of subsidy. You know your language has changed. The World Bank told us that the major cause of our poverty is corruption. You don't mean it. <laughs> you don't mean it. World Bank was the one that asked. <laughs> so without World Bank, you wouldn't know. Okay. As for the ACPN party candidate, that is Alaji Ganiu Galadima. The man confused me the whole evening. There are international investors and local investors that will come to this country so that they can be handed over to the to, to investors. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're welcome to ah. You know, I do well, sir. I saw you, you know, putting up your agwada the whole time. The man confused me the whole evening, especially during subsidy. He said that um, only the rich people have benefited from subsidy and that even some of them have 20, 30 cars. I was like, mm? Subsidy is not even in the interest of the common man. Some of us who have as, as many as 20, 30 cars. They are like, what are the common people on the street? The poor peasant farmers, what are they benefiting from this? Some of them don't even have a bicycle. Wait, wait, pause right there. Are you saying, sir, you know, that you have 20, 30 cars? Or you are saying some people, you are just general? Because, because I'm a little bit confused, there's a difference. Some of us who have as, as many as 20, 30 cars. Because it would be hard for me to believe he cares about common people. If he has 20, 30 cars and he's not even vice president yet, he actually made a really good point. A lot of Nigerian politicians have 20, 30 cars, and they still want us to believe that they care about common people when there are people that are needy around them. What do people do with 20, 30 cars? It doesn't make sense to me but so many of our politicians have that you don't have to put i knew you would take it down sorry your uncle you know disrespecting you bilonia warren buffett drives cadillac xts and please don't get me wrong i'm not saying people shouldn't buy nice cars i have nothing against driving range rover or whatever you want to drive but what do people do with 20 something cars with 30 something cars when they are surrounded by poverty anyway hopefully alaji was just saying it figuratively he doesn't have i mean i don't know i'd like to know now to the two women in the room ah my mother that's in the Lord. Why not? Why did you do me like that? Why? You didn't make your presence memorable in that room. Why? There were times that you didn't even answer the question. What would be the major economic trust of your party, or if you get selected, as far as the aviation sector is concerned? The major thing a typical Nigerian needs to get to look into is to see how we can 
rekindle patriotism into our hearts. Because all these things, we have them in abundance. All we have the manpower, we have the resources to fix those things. I think recently we had the news that we're all overjoyed that there will be a kind of the bringing back or the awakening of the Nigerian airways, which we're all joyful about. But as time goes on, let it just, we don't know what happened to it. So to be candid, what Nigeria just needs is patriotic leaders, leaders that have Nigeria at heart. This is just what I will say about the aviation sector. Thank you very much. Did she answer the question? She did not answer the question. What would your government do about aviation if you win? That was the question. So to be candid, what Nigeria just needs is patriotic leaders, leaders that have Nigeria at heart. This is just what I will say about the aviation sector. Thank you very much. You, you don't mean it. <laughs> Auntie, you did not answer the question. You did not. And then Auntie Kadija, Auntie Kadija, why? You went say, and you were doing a, a, a tax the ta to, uh, to at least ensure that um, all the SMEs have some, um, depending on the kind of um, business that you're doing, you have some, uh, all the... Auntie Kadija, why? Auntie Kadija, why? No, 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 I don't do me like that. Which would include the issue of... Um, um, the issues of uh, the issues that we we highlighted earlier on. It's okay. Stop it. We had the first time. You were supposed to go in there and win the debate with intelligent arguments. Everybody was talking about uh, Peter Obi and uh, Osimbajo. When we had two intelligent women in the room, nobody was talking about the women. No, no. You disappointed, Mama. You were supposed to over prepare for something like that. You don't just prepare. You over prepare for something like this. Next time you go there. Oh, it. You're already there. And I know that you were prepared. I'm not saying you are not prepared. Please don't get me wrong, my mothers. But you know, from what I noticed, maybe Auntie Kadija was just nervous. You get what I'm saying? But if really you want this office, Auntie Kadija, you cannot afford to be nervous. No. You make your arguments known with well-articulated points and correct data, and then you worry about nervousness later. You want to be vice president? You cannot afford to be nervous. And so, please, my mothers in the Lord, next time, make us proud. Eh? <laughs> Own it. We are rooting for you guys. Good luck in this coming election. Now, people have been saying that uh, former Governor Peter Obi did really well in the debate. You have to give it up. He showed up. He was well composed. He went there with a mission to take down all the other candidates, especially the APC candidates. <laughs> they were going back and forth that night. And you know, that's how it should be. They said that the man outlined problems and gave solutions and gave statistics to back up his positions, which was wonderful until people started fact-checking the man. <laughs> Governor Peter will be in our duo, please don't do us like that because we all have access to the internet. We can all Google stuff. It's like you are insulting our intelligence when you keep making up stuff. I'm not the one that, say, that says it. It's uh, the viewers that are saying that you made up stuff. For example, the man said that when he was the governor of Anambra State, that it was the first to buy up to 30,000 computers for schools in the whole of Africa. I bought the highest computer ever bought by a government in Africa, 30,000. My Nigerian people, please stop mentioning Africa as if Nigeria is Africa. <laughs> Nigeria is not the only country in Africa. It's a continent with many countries that are doing far better than Nigeria. I think my Nigerian people need to understand that you need to travel. How can you claim that no other administration has bought up 30,000 computers in the whole of Africa? How about Eberolon now? Even in Nigeria, some years ago, I remember that uh, the government of Ekiti State bought like 48,000 laptops for their students and teachers. So even in Nigeria, you can find someone that beat his record so please stop saying eh, the whole of africa now the same governor peter will be said that nigeria has fallen on the global competitive index from 124 to 127 but not only was he wrong um nigeria actually rose on the index by 10 places so we actually did better he also said that intra-africa trade is now less than nine percent which is also not true intra-africa trade is actually around 15 percent in fact in 2016 intra-africa exports made up to 18 percent of total exports according to Brookings Institution. So, sir, I know that it's a very tough situation to be in in a debate and sometimes you don't remember the actual number but you don't have to make things up. Overall, the debate uh, was very interesting. If you guys watched it, there were times that were boring, you know, but it was actually interesting. But we look forward to the presidential debate. That will be the real interesting one. And the most important thing is for the President Buhari to participate this time around. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. 
So last week, Nam Dekanu released six scientific evidence. He actually added one to make it seven to back his claim that Nigerian President Mahmoud Buhari died in London during his surgery in 2017. And the person acting as Nigerian president right now is from Sudan by the name Jubril. So I've been attacked for not addressing the scientific evidence. And if I should address it, the same people will still abuse me and say that I've been paid by APC. Personally, <laughs> I feel like addressing this is a waste of time. Not because I don't care about people knowing, but because it's going to be a long video talking about this. So I'd like to apologize to those who already know that this theory is not true. But apparently there are some educated people that also bought into the theory that uh, it is now Jubril, not Buhari, which is why people are saying I have to talk about it. So for those who do not believe in this theory, please bear with me while we go through this. But debunking lies doesn't mean that I'm supporting Buhari and no, I'm not paid to do this. Regardless of whatever you believe, I'm not paid by either APC or PDP or any politician to do what I do on my show. So if you want me to talk about it, here we go. Now, on this first scientific evidence is that Buhari used to be left-handed, but since he came back from London, he's now right-handed. So it has to be another person acting as Buhari. Now, this is the picture that Nandi uses to back up his claim. However, there's something called image mirror effect that you use to flip an image or to flip a video when you are editing. So for example, this is the same image. I can make it look like this. Or I can make it look like this. Buari is right-handed. He has always been right-handed and he's still right-handed. This was Buari before he went to London and this is him very recently. So the original picture that Nam Dekanu mirrored by flipping to the other side is this picture. I can make it look like this or I can make it look like this. As you guys can see, we can flip it both ways. So no, Buari did not suddenly become right-handed when he came back from London. He has always been right-handed and he's still right-handed. The picture was flipped. The second scientific evidence he gave is that Buari's left ear used to be a little dented. Now it's smooth. So it's true that Buari's left ear is dented a little bit. However, his right ear is perfectly normal. Once again, you can flip the picture to make it look like the left ear is now the right ear. So this is the picture that now Namdi uses to back up his claim. He once again flipped Buari's right ear to make it look like it's Buari's left ear, which has no dent. And then he says he has no dent anymore. Meanwhile, this is a recent picture of Buari with his dented left ear. Pay attention to the date on the lower right hand corner of the picture. So all the pictures that I'm using, I'm including the person's Instagram handle or Twitter handle so that you can go and double check by yourself later. And I'm also including the date. The date is usually at the lower right hand corner of the picture so that you can verify by yourself and um, if you don't see the year it means the picture was uploaded this year Instagram never includes the current year on a picture and also this is a recent picture of him with his right ear also this is a picture of Buari before the elections where you can see both of his ears if you zoom in very well you would notice that the left ear is dented and the right ear is fine this is another picture of him where you can see both ears and the dented one as well as the normal one so no his dented ear then suddenly becomes smooth like uh, Namdi has been saying, it's still there. And this is a video of him where you can see his dented ear. Social media platforms are being used to propagate hatred between religious, political and tribal groups. So Namdi's third scientific evidence was that Buari now looks younger than he did before going to London. He said that Buari now looks like a 50-year-old man, uh, so he has to be somebody else. However, the picture that Namdi uses to prove this shows evidence of Photoshop brush strokes. Brush strokes over Buari's um, forehead and cheeks. It looks like someone was trying to get rid of Buari's wrinkles and all the facial lines. However, this is a picture of Buari. Once again, you can pay attention to the date. You can still see the wrinkles on his face and the lines on his face. You can follow his official photographer, by the way, for recent pictures of Buhari. He also uploads every event that Buhari attends. Now, this next scientific evidence was that Buhari is no longer seen in public with his wife, Aisha Buhari, or his children. He also said that when Buhari's son came back from Germany after his accident, that the way he shook Buhari's hand was awkward, so it has to be that it's not his father. However, this is Buhari and his wife, Aisha, and their daughter in August of this year, 
as they were preparing to go to China. Also, this is a picture of the three of them on the private jet. I'm not sure what he meant by not seeing them together. Also, this is Buhari and his wife last week going to an event. And also, at the end of last month, Buhari's wife organized an event and Buhari was there sitting next to her. Um, also, this is Buhari and his grandchildren, some of his grandchildren, when he came back from London. And this is Buhari and his wife when he came back from London. <laughs> And when his son came back from Germany, I'm not sure how Unamdi concluded that this picture was awkward. If I've seen a picture of Buari hugging his children in the past, I would say shaking his hand is awkward why didn't he hug his son but I've never seen him hugging any of his children so I'm not sure how he decided that the picture was awkward so the next scientific evidence by Enam Dekano is that he said Buari was still at Ambukola Saraki before going to London for the surgery and this is the picture that he uses to back up his claim now this is the original picture it's from 2015 if you guys take a good look you can tell that the picture is slanted I mean look at the top of the shelf behind Buari it's one piece by the way and as you guys can see it's slanted and and also look at the carpet you can tell that the picture is slanted but if that doesn't convince you please visit Saraki's Instagram handle Saraki uploaded these pictures of him and Buari in 2015 look at the date you can see the date at the lower right hand corner like I told you guys this was uploaded on November 13 2015 Saraki also uploaded this one you guys can take a good look as well at this one uh, it looks to me that the two men are of similar height although Saraki stands straight and walk straight Buhari most of the time doesn't stand straight so it's possible that they are of the same height I don't know but they are definitely of similar height this was November 12 2015 Saraki also posted this and Saraki also posted this on October 4 2015 of course they look of similar height and I think that you guys should see a picture of Saraki visiting Buhari while he was in London as you guys can see the height so Nam kind of said that when Buhari came back from London Saraki is now much taller than Buhari and this is the picture that Kano is using to buy up his claim now first of all I don't need anyone to tell me that Saraki was standing on something in this picture because the person behind Saraki is Spika Dogara he also appeared significantly taller than Buhari in this picture you guys remember that Dogara was also in some of the pictures that Saraki posted in 2015 on his Instagram page some of the pictures that I showed you now this is a more recent picture of the three of them you guys can look at the date where it even looks as if Buhari may be taller than Dogara in this picture also, this is another recent picture of Saraki and Buari. At any point in this video, by the way, if you need to, please feel free to pause the show and go and double check and go and check those pictures yourself. That's why I included those Instagram handles as well as the date. I did not edit or Photoshop any of the pictures or videos that I'm using. Remember, you can always do your own research. And if that doesn't convince you, here is a video shot in October of 2017. In this video, you would notice Dogara's height as well. And also here is another video that was released May of this year where you can see all three of them. The visit of Senate President and Speaker of the House of Reps to Well, ah, okay, so the height looks similar to me, but hey, you guys should be the judge. So Unamdi's next scientific evidence, he said that Buhari's palm print before going to London is different from his palm print right now. He said that this is why Buhari no longer waves in public. He said Buhari no longer waves in public and that now he holds a fist. First of all, Buhari still waves in public, okay? This was Buhari waving December 1st of this year on his way to Poland. And also this was him waving to injured soldiers on November 28th of this year. Also, this was Buhari waving on November 29th in a car in Lake Chad when he went to visit Lake Chad. You can clearly see his palm print in that picture. Also, if that's not clear, here is another picture of his palm print. So there has been several pictures of Buhari waving in public after he came back from London. And this one was taken on November 6th of this year. And then this one was taken on November 14th of this year. And you know, it looks to me like Buhari has three distinct lines in the palm of his hand. He also has other lines that are not 
not distinct. Now, this is the picture that Kanu uses, saying that Buari had four distinct lines. But it looks to me that the way Buari was holding the paper that day made the fourth line more visible. Because on the same day, when he raised his hand higher and the palm was much stretched out, you could hardly see the fourth line. Like I said, I do not Photoshop pictures, so you guys can go and double check this. Both of these pictures, by the way, were taken by Pius Utomi Ekwe. And this man took the pictures for AFP and Getty Images. He took those pictures on election day. So you guys can go on Getty Image and search for Pius Utomi Ekwe and all his pictures would come up. And on the left side of the screen, you can narrow down your search so that only pictures of Buari that he has taken would come up. And then you guys would be able to see both pictures because he, he took both pictures on the same day. And I'm not saying that the fourth line on Buari's palm is no longer there. You can still trace it in some of the pictures. I'm just saying that the fourth line is not as distinct as the three lines. Once in a while, you can notice it like in this picture and also in this picture. Now, I know that that may not be convincing for a lot of people, but try to find pictures of Buari waving before he went to London in 2017. And you will hardly see the fourth line in all those pictures. As a matter of fact, you won't even notice the fourth line. For example, this picture was uploaded in August of 2016. You only see the three lines. And also this picture was taken on inauguration day in 2015. You only see three lines. So it's not as if it was when Buari came back from London that suddenly you only notice the three lines. I'm just saying that even before he went to London, we only noticed the three lines of his palm, except in that picture that was taken that day because of the way he was holding the paper. That was why you could notice the fourth line. If there are other pictures with four lines feel free to send them to me but i haven't seen any other picture of buari with four lines on the palm of his hand i'm not saying that those pictures are not out there i'm just saying i haven't seen it like i said i'm very sure he has another line but it's not that visible now as for him holding a feast this is something that buari has been doing even before he became president it's like his signature he does that a lot this was a picture of buhari during the elections um, where he was holding a feast also this was a picture of him on inauguration day where he was holding a feast he didn't suddenly start holding a fist as Nam Dekano claims. Unam the seventh evidence was that Buari had receding hairline in the front. He's saying that the front hair is not as full, that he's bald headed and that he had lots of gray hair. Now he said that Buari's hair has suddenly become fuller and darker. And so this is Buari's hairline before he became president. He took this picture in 2015. He didn't have hair in the front like Nam Dekano said, but his sideburn, which some people call Teddy, was definitely full and he, he definitely has some hair you know towards this side of his head and of course it's still full even when he lost weight you could see his side bone you could see his teddy about his hair being dark there's something called hair dye my dad used to use it it's very cheap you put it in your hair it makes your hair darker when you wash it off i'm very sure that buari can afford hair dye despite that these are recent pictures of buari with gray hair as you guys can see this picture was taken last month and you can see his gray hair now whenever he cuts down his hair it would look scanty again like this one from last month as well now namdi also accused buari of not removing his cap despite being compelled to first of all i have no idea who compelled buhari to remove his cap maybe he can do us the favor of telling us who compelled buhari the last time i saw the man without a cap was before elections when he wore suits to win people's vote but have you seen him in suits since that time have you seen him in Igbo outfits since that time that was just to win election but you know i've seen other pictures of him where his cap was pushed back a little bit and i do not see any hair in the front like nam they said that the hair is now fuller maybe he can show us the picture which would be ironic because he said the man has refused to remove his cap so how did he know that his hair is now fuller in the front now besides the seven scientific evidence although i still don't know how any of this is scientific but we'll call it whatever he calls it besides those ones so nam they also said that buari was not in paris for the recent paris peace forum so he posted two pictures that reporters have used as evidence that buari was in paris and he said that how come Buari went in in black outfit and suddenly when he sat down his outfit changed to a blue outfit well that's because it's a three-day event and Nam Dekano chose pictures from two of the days the first picture that he posted was from the first day of the event and the second picture he posted was from another day of the event now even if you guys think that Nigerian journalists were lying about Buari attending the forum at least the Paris Peace Forum shouldn't be lying about people that came to their event so all you guys have to do is go on their YouTube 
YouTube page. They have their own YouTube page because they uploaded a video of the event on their own YouTube page. And guess what? Buari was in one of the videos that they uploaded. So if you don't believe pictures, at least you can believe a video. Lastly, Unam Dekanu also said that Buari can no longer speak Fulani language Fufude, even though Buari is Fulani. He also said that the Minister of Information like Mohammed has confirmed that Buari can no longer speak Fulani language Fufude. First of all, I don't know whether Buari speaks Fufude or not because if I hear it, I won't know. Which makes me wonder how Unam Dekanu could tell that Buari doesn't speak his native language because I doubt that Unam Dekanu also speaks Fufude or understands it. But you know, speaking of like Mohammed, the man has denied saying that Buari cannot speak Fufude. He said he never said that and even though it's hard to trust like Mohammed sometimes I personally cannot imagine him saying something like that about his boss why would like Mohammed say that Buari cannot speak his native language also people are circulating this post that was supposedly written by NTA on their Facebook page so they're saying that it has to be true if NTA would testify to it just so you guys know there's a real NTA Facebook page with more than 300,000 Facebook likes and that one is verified it's called NTA network news whenever you see that blue sign with a mark with a check mark behind somebody's name on social media it means that's their verified social media page if you don't see it that could be a fake account which is what's happening in this situation there's a fake NTA account they call themselves NTA Abuja you know it's fake when they post something like this they said I'm a very slow reader Buari confesses why would NTA post something like that? You know that NTA is owned by the Nigerian government. Do you really think NTA will post something like this about the president? I don't think so. Also, why would NTA post something like this? How I want Charles to F me today. Like for real, I don't think NTA would do something like that or post a picture like this that has absolutely nothing to do with the caption. I mean, some of the captions are so ridiculous and outrageous. Like this one says, my boyfriend living abroad hardly sends me money. People should advise me. And I'm like, I don't think NTA will post something like that or this one that says i have a serious crush on a guy should i tell him so when they posted this picture of lai muhammad i'm um, claiming that lai muhammad said that the surgery affected buari's ability to speak his mother tongue all i had to do was look for the check mark the verification and i could tell that this was the fake nta account so please make sure that you look for uh, verification when you're looking for the real account. Having said all that, if anyone has a video of Buari speaking for Fude before he went to London and also after he came back from London, please send it to me and I will play it for everybody. Uh, if I understand the language, I will search for the video myself, but even if somebody is playing it next to me, I wouldn't know. Also, there was an event where Buari introduced his wife as Mrs. Buhari. And so after that event, um, those who believe that it's Jubril are saying that that's the confirmation that it's Jubril that Buhari Buari would not introduce his wife as Mrs. Buari that he was supposed to say Aisha. So I'm not sure why that's an argument because her name is Mrs. Aisha Buari and her husband called her Mrs. Buari. I'm not sure what, what, what is wrong with that. I don't know why that's an issue. Maybe somebody can enlighten me. That's her last name. She's Mrs. Aisha Buhari. So very recently Buari went to Poland and um, people are saying that why should he only address the issue of whether he was cloned or not outside of Nigeria. If you've been paying attention, you will know that Buari mostly answer questions while he's outside Nigeria. He hardly does any press conference in Nigeria. I mean, where was the last time that he had a press conference? He was at a Nigerian event in Poland. He was meeting with Nigerians when someone, a Nigerian, asked whether he's real or not. And he answered the person. Should he have said that, wait till I get back to Nigeria before I answer your question so that they won't say I address this in Poland. I'm not sure why that's an issue, but he talked about this among Nigerians in Poland. And while we're talking about this, in my last episode, I featured an Igbo guy whom I said is the only person that I know that speaks like Buari. Now, some people attacked me for featuring the Igbo guy. They said if an Igbo person can learn how to speak like Buari, why wouldn't a Sudanese person be able to? You know, that may be true, but I forgot to add in my last episode that even though he's Igbo, his parents are from Anambra, the Igbo man, MC Tagwai, was was born and raised in Katsina that is a Buhari state so I'm very sure he knows how to speak Hausa that probably helped him in his ability to speak with Buhari's accent once again me saying all this doesn't mean that I'm defending Buhari or that I've been paid by Buhari or any other politician it's just because people say they want me to talk about this that's why I'm talking about this after my last episode by the way oof, quite a we survived because the last time that we've been abused like this was when we tried to interview Mugabe 
Anyway, I realize now that when you say the truth, people take it as an attack. Just like we have doctors and nurses, we have people who are satirists because that is what they specialize on. And one of such people is Professor Olatunji Dari, who wrote the article that I talked about last week. The man has been a satirist for decades and several newspapers publish his satire. They've been publishing him for more than 30 years. This clarification is necessary for those who are insisting that the newspaper is the one that should be blamed for publishing a satire no they've been publishing this man's satire for more than 30 years nobody has ever complained people enjoy reading him so the newspaper shouldn't be blamed if we the readers read something and it's a satire and we didn't know that it is satire whenever we found out that it is satire we should be able to admit that what we read was a satire you know i've realized that um nigerians are very selective in calling a spade a spade and i've also realized that a lot of people prefer to be lied to but once again you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real Moving on to Togo, the president for Yansigwe is insisting on holding an election on the 20th of this month. Now, the only problem is people do not trust him because he's trying to run again. You guys remember that his father was president for 38 years and he's also been president in 2005. That is 13 years ago. So people are saying that what they want is presidential term limit so that he won't continue to run as he's trying to and they also want him to step down they want him to resign they don't want him to contest in the next election but instead of him stepping down and allowing presidential term limit the man is insisting on holding an election on the 20th of this month meanwhile because people believe that he would rig the election like he has done in the past and also the day that he imposed himself on the people by fire by force when his father died because of that they don't trust him and so they've resumed their protest and guess what Soldiers are now out killing protesters. Hundreds took to the streets across the country over the weekend after calls from a coalition of 14 opposition parties. Violent clashes erupted between security forces and protesters. Togo has been going through a serious political crisis for over a year, with massive demonstrations being held across the country calling for the resignation of President Ford Nyasingbe. Nyasingbe has been accused of trying to change the constitution in order to retain his grip on power until at least 2025. So now churches and Muslim bodies in Togo are leading the protest. And guess what? Opposition is calling for a boycott of the election. So many activists are speaking up. They are deploying military forces on civilians. 51 years. That's how long we have been enduring this regime. Every single one of you that are siding against the people of Togo, they echo us. The Togolese government, the US government, the French government, all these institutions that are remaining quiet on the execution of our people. We will not forgive. Now that's heartbreaking. Like the passion with which she, she spoke and she's really right. All these uh, bodies, ECOWAS and so on. What exactly are they doing? It's quite unfortunate. We'll keep you guys posted on what happens in Togo. You guys know not much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now, before I sign out, this is Christmas season and I know that many of you abroad will be sending money home. And I'm not just talking about Nigeria. I know you'll be sending money to Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, as well as Kenya. If that's you, don't forget to download Wave and use that to send money to your loved ones because it will make your life so much easier without having to pay any transaction fee or without having to travel anywhere. So download Wave if you are yet to so that you can send money to your loved ones and the person you're sending money to would get it in five minutes. Also, if this is your first time of downloading wave remember to use my name as a promo code just enter adiola as promo code before your first transaction so that you can get extra five dollars added to the money that you are sending to your loved ones if you don't enter my name before your first transaction i'm sorry but you would lose the five dollars i don't want you to lose the five dollars all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my youtube channel please make sure that you do that until next week i'm gonna see you all later peace out Happy holidays from Wave and from your girl Adiola. It's the season for spreading good cheer. And I know many of you will be sending money home at this time, okay? <laughs> Which is why I wanted to let you know that Wave is the greatest gift I could ask for this holiday season. This app allows me to send money easily and affordably on my phone so I could spend more time and money on those that I care about the most. Let Wave take the stress out of sending. And may you and your loved ones have a wonderful holiday season. Peace out.